another amazing Adobe Live. I'm your host, Clady, and I'm so happy to be here with you for these two days of getting started in InDesign. I can see so many faces in the chat. Sean, good day. Good day, everyone. Good morning for those of you who are just waking up. I'm streaming here from Manchester, UK. It's 2.30 in the afternoon, so good afternoon for all those of you that are also on this side of the world. My name is Clady. I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK, where I run my design studio, print my soul. But I can see Christy Jackson, Jesus Guerrero, Annabelle Aguilar, and Andreas Holler. Nice to see you. Team, our lovely team is here with us for helping us during this stream. Keep your eyes peeled because team is going to paste some very useful link in the chat. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Christy. Caroline, thank you so much for being here. So today we're going to be talking about the amazing feature of InDesign 2021. As you know, we're just coming out from a fantastic event, perhaps the biggest and for sure the most fun and entertaining creative um, event online. The creative conference, of course, that I'm talking about is Max and Max. We launched the uh, the wonderful Adobe 2021 that we're going to be exploring today, the Adobe Creative Cloud. And today we're going to take a look at InDesign. For this reason, I have a fantastic studio mate with me here today in order to showcase the Share 4 of you enhanced 2021 release. And let me welcome to my lovely studio mate, Maria. Hello everyone. Hello, Gladi. I'm really excited to be here. Hi, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us today. So we're going to be working together. Maria is a, a print and packaging specialist at Studio Per My Soul. Let me actually jump into my screen. Let's see if I can find the right <laughs> scene to do that. Um, it should be right here, hopefully. Yes. yes. So here we are, Studio Print My Soul. You might recognize some lovely familiar faces. And Maria is our uh, senior designer, print and packaging specialist. And today we're going to be working together in InDesign in order to create some wonderful Halloween themed um, postcards and some other amazing stuff. So we're going to be working together. Yes, that's true. And we're going to show you how to make the process with Adobe InDesign so much faster without even needing to open the actual application. So, Claudie, what are we going to do? I think we're going to start with some postcard. Oh, I clicked something <laughs> with my hand. So we definitely create some postcard. And I guess I will see you uh, in the review process. That's true. Let me check with the client to be sure of what they need. And I'm going to join you in a bit. Fantastic. Amazing. Thank you so much, Maria. So See let's, you thank you. So let's jump into some work. Uh, as I said, already open a document just by clicking in design, really want to get to work, but let's start from the beginning here. First of all, I created some files for you guys to get access to in order to follow along. As I said, we're going to be creating some lovely, um, Halloween themed, postcard. If you head to my website, iamcloudy.com slash resources, you should be able to access the assets for this stream. I've prepared a InDesign template so you can uh, work together with me and also some amazing illustration that were created by my other studio mate, uh, content creator and illustrator, Polina. So those are the illustration that Polina has kindly uh, allowed her to, to work with. We're going to have, as you can see from the little icon, some pumpkins and a background. And we're gonna use those assets to create a very spooky postcard. And by the way, let me know what you guys are gonna be doing in Halloween. Are you gonna wear a costume? Are you gonna um, celebrate it? Are you gonna do maybe a Zoom party celebration? Are we still gonna put costume in it? Even if we are in um, in uh, this lockdown atmosphere, I will definitely put some costume and then maybe, maybe we should do a full Adobe Live in costume. <laughs> for that but let me see in the chat if there is any questions before we jump into InDesign I want to see if there is any specific question 
feel free as i always say this is a safe space to learn together so anytime that we are here in this wonderful adobe live please feel free to ask any questions about the app about anything that you would like to do with this wonderful indesign and i'm going to be here also talking about locate color and content aware wrap tomorrow so stay tuned for more indesign amazingness but let's start by creating a document let me see in the chat i can see matt Tim is saying so early, right? I believe it's eight in the morning. Tim is saying maybe we'll put on costumes for the UK Adobe Spooky Game Show. Ooh, maybe. I really want to know, Tim. Give us more hint. Tony, I'm sure Tony will be super, super amazing to, to follow with that. Fantastic. Right, so I'm going to keep my eyes on the chat. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure to head on behance.net slash live so I can read your question and comments. And I love the Italian going on. Uros, ciao, nice to see you. Nadia, Noor, thank you so much for joining and being here. And again, put your question in the chat and I'll work along and I'll be able to also um, discuss all the new features with you. But let's get started. So I just opened my InDesign and all I have to do is click on create new in order to open a new document. Then I'm gonna select the print um, little tab here in order to set my intent to print. What that means is that InDesign is going to already change some setting in my document. In particular, uh, the units are gonna change into millimeters or inches, depending which side of the word are you working on. And then we're gonna see our margin changing and adding also a bleed and slot. We're gonna talk about the bleed in a second. I wanna say, what's up to RB and Caroline, is there a challenge to do? So Caroline, today um, you can work with me. I gave you the asset, it's the challenge is for you. Uh, this is just more exploring InDesign together. And as I said, I'm gonna create a Halloween postcard. In order to get the assets, make sure to add on imclarity.com slash resources, and you'll be able to do um, to work together and create your own postcard. Also, um, towards half of the stream, so in about 20 minutes, we're gonna go back and link with Maria in order to show you how to take advantage of the wonderful share for review feature. That's an amazing way of sharing your work with your teammates and with your clients. It's super secure, it's super fast, it allows you to edit and manage the entire review process so much faster. Your client don't even need to have InDesign anymore, but we're gonna look at that in about, again, 20 minutes. Let's create our file first. So um, let's go back and head into our new document panel. And in this case, I'm just gonna uh, click about three pages. Maybe we wanna do more versions of the postcard. And then I'm gonna set up a four by six standard postcard. I'm gonna name my file Halloween postcard. And then I'm gonna go a little bit scroll down in order to talk about the bleed setting. Let me know, raise your hand in the chat if you know what a bleed is. Joe Giovannetti from Italy, nice to see you. Let me know where you're also uh, watching from. It's always super, super amazing to see our international community in chat. But again, I'm gonna uh, explain a little bit about the bleed. Um, Luis is asking, sorry, maybe it's the wrong place to ask this, but what is InDesign supposed to work with? File for printing, web design. So, Luis, that's the perfect place to ask questions about InDesign. InDesign is a wonderful professional tool to create layouts. Those layouts can be for print and also for web. Um, few, I think a couple of weeks ago before Max, I've also done a stream on how to create a um, web publication. Design is, InDesign is amazing, allows you to add videos. Maybe we can do that tomorrow. Tomorrow we can do a digital document. That's actually a very, very, uh, great inspiration. Thank you for inspiring me, Louise. So tomorrow we're gonna work in a digital document to showcase how InDesign works also for web. But today we're gonna be working on a print design, which is perhaps what InDesign is more famous from. And InDesign allows you to create beautiful layout, set types, and let's have a look also at the bleed, which is specific of the, um, of the bleed. Shareya is saying, I'm a beginner. Are you going to teach the basic too? Of course, we're going to start from the basic because I always believe even for pro, you really need to always be solid on basics. When you get your basics right, you then get to create something that is well, well done and a design that lasts long and it even be easier to deal with for your colleagues. 
fantastic. So keep your going with your question. I'm Michelle. Nice to see you. And let's um, keep explaining the bleedies because we have perhaps many people uh, like you, Sharia, they are a beginner. So when we set our intent for print, we have this lovely bleed setting coming here at the very bottom of the page. Now, if you're wondering what a bleed setting is, I usually set at one, uh, not point one to five, um, four uh, inches. That's a three millimeter on, um, when, depending if you're working with the metric system. So it's usually three millimeter here um, in Europe. And what a bleed is, is an extended area. They will be here. I'm just gonna, don't mind my notes. <laughs> the bleed is an extended area around the document that will allow you to stretch the background. So when your printer is gonna go ahead and cut your file, your printed file, you always have some jiggle room. So if the printer perhaps cuts it a little bit further, so let's say that that's how we document extend thanks to the bleed. If the printer cuts it a little bit further up, usually you will have a very uh, weird white border, but with the bleed, we allow to have some space to stretch the background. So when the printer cuts it up, we have still the same color and the mistake is not noticeable. So we're definitely gonna set up um, our bleed. And I'm gonna put my notes back. We're definitely gonna set up the bleeds for our print document because we wanna work nice and safe. And of course the margin is gonna be the area inside the document. But let's start by open, opening the document and click on create. You can also click on preview if you're not sure what you're doing, it's always great to click on preview in order to see the change taking place live. See, if I make the bleed area larger, um, you can see that that happens live, but we don't really need that. We're very happy with the not 0.125 inches to start. Fantastic. Click on create to open the new document. Now let's go ahead and have a look at this line here. So if I zoom in, you see that we have a purple line, a black line and the red line. The red line is there and that's the bleed. So that's the extended area that we have created right here. And then we have the uh, trim line, which is this black line. That's where the printer is going to cut our document. And then this purple line, which is the margin. The margin is a safe area that we always want to keep in order to make sure that it doesn't extend too much. And again, when the printer cut it, we want to make sure that our information doesn't get trimmed. So you want, you don't want to go ever too far towards the towards the end of the margin and that's why it's good to set a limit within the trim area now if you download my template i made that really clear i wish that i um let's see if i can open it from here or i'll show you towards the end of the stream but uh, i have created a document that has uh, the really clear um definition of the space let's see if i can perhaps find that right now since we are here i need to remember where did i place the document for you and is in the stream asset here it is fantastic so in this template um you can see if you go under your layer and again if you're looking for the layers panel head under window and layers and if you see this little red layer here that explain exactly what we were talking about so we have the bleed area which is the extra area then the trim and then the safe area for the margin. Fantastic, hope that makes sense. Let me know in the chat and um, feel free to use the template document to get started. Otherwise you can create your own. Fantastic, so what happened now is that I'm gonna start to build my postcard by bringing in asset. I've already created some, brought some asset into my CC libraries, which you, you have here uh, on the right. If you cannot find your CC libraries, all you have to do again is to add under the window menu and choose li CC libraries. Make sure that it's ticked. And once it's ticked, you'll be able here to see the wonderful CC libraries panel. If you have created some illustration that you would like to use within your InDesign file, it's super easy to work within the libraries because that will be available to use all over your Creative Cloud and also super useful to share with your team. We're gonna see if we are gonna get to use our libraries with Maria as well later on during our time for review. Now, let me bring some background uh, that our lovely Polina has created. I know we already shared the sky. I should have some more over here. Hopefully I have all the skies here. Here it is. So once you open your destination folder with the um, different assets, in this case, I want to bring this background into my library. All you have to do is to uh, make sure that you head into your InDesign and 
open your CC libraries. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger for you to see all the assets. And then I'm gonna head to my destination folder and I can bring in the assets in the library by clicking and dragging it over. And they should be over here. So as you can see, all I have to do is to click and drag into InDesign. And here it is, it's loading and ready to be used in InDesign, but also on the Creative Cloud. And you can do so with as many documents as you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring these other two background just so we can have choice. And maybe when we have a little review with Maria, we can decide which is the final one that we're gonna settle with. I'm gonna get in the chat and see if there is any other questions. Janet is saying, Bleed is the extra art beyond the trim and eight of an inch is standard in the US. Fantastic, yes, very correct, Janet. Thank you so much. And Noor is going in Adobe Pad One mode. Full show is saying, good afternoon. Caroline, three millimeter breed in Fiori in the UK. Correct. Giggle room, fantastic. I can see my mom in the chat. Hi, Julie. <laughs> nice to see you. Hi, mom. <laughs> Wonderful. So keep your question coming and just if you would just want to say hi. And again, let me know where you're tuning in from. I really love to see where everyone is from. I'm here in Manchester, UK, but I look forward to see where you guys are from. Fantastic. It's time to start creating. So now that I got my document set, right? Oh, got a question for Christy coming. If you put an asset into the CC library, can you keep it RGB or it doesn't need to be CMYK? So the asset is contain the same information that you created. So Christy, if you have created the document in CMYK on RGB, those information are gonna be part of your assets and are gonna be um, within embedded within the asset that you uh, bring into your CC libraries. Although when you export your files, you can always, um, we're gonna see how to export for print today. You're gonna be able to make sure that you export for print. Now, you wanna make sure that you also don't create your file correctly from the very beginning, because otherwise you definitely will experience changing colors. So I will always suggest to create your file with the correct specification, so RGB, which is red, green, and blue if you're working on screen, and CMYK, cyan, yellow, magenta, black, if you are working for print, and then bring it to the library, just to keep everything nice and safe and make sure that you're gonna get the colors exactly as you expected. Fantastic. Can you know the size of the document in metric number? So Joe, I will usually do um, an A5 for a postcard or an A6. So that hopefully should be helpful. Also, if you wanna use some of the preset for InDesign, I'm gonna press command new to open a new document. If you head under print, you'll be able to find, click on view all presets. And here he's gonna show you the metric. So we have A5, A3, A4. You can go with an A5 for the, post, for the postcard and that will be absolutely fine. Also, you can change the orientation if you rather work for a landscape rather than a, a portrait mode. I'm gonna close this because that was just an example for our lovely Joe. And let's keep going and let's start creating this postcard. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to click and drag, look how easy it is, in order to load an image from my libraries. And then I'm gonna click at the corner and click once in order to um, place my file then with this by clicking on the bounding box as you can see is this blue line here you can click and drag in order to change the size of the actual artboard that contains the image another way in which you can work is to use the wonderful frame tool which you can find here on the left if you click on the frame tool you can click and drag in order to create a frame and i'm going to do that on my second page and let me zoom in so you can see well what I'm doing. And this is a placeholder. So we have a frame and with a cross in the middle that tell us that that's the place where we can put our images here. Fantastic. So all we have to do now is to click on our assets from the CC library and drop it inside our box. And as you can see now, the image is already contained within the frame. So depending on the way you wanna work, you can either place the image and then resize it or uh, if you want to be a little bit neat and you already have a very defined layout, I would strongly suggest to first use the frame tool to create a frame and then drop in any asset you wish. 
So, um, Sharon is saying, sorry, I missed most of these. No, don't worry. We're just set up in the file. We're going nice and, and smooth here. The one thing that I can tell you is that stay tuned because we're going to be sharing for review live with my wonderful uh, with my fun wonderful teammate, Maria. She'll be joining us in order to explore the wonderful share for review feature that we use at Print My Soul pretty much all the time. Since June 2020, when the feature was first released, we got addicted to it. It's such a time saver. We do way less meeting and we get our review and edit process done in pretty much one time in one single call okay fantastic another thing that we want to take care of is that i can see here that i have facing pages that means that the pages are one next to the other and i don't really want that because i'm just creating a postcard so there are many different ways in which you can undo this uh, i'm sure that it happens many times uh, to everyone and let me know in the chat if that ever happened to you that you create a document and you end up with facing pages when you don't need it so all you have to do is to head to your pages panel and then here uh, you can see you have all the different pages and again if for whatever reason you cannot find any panel that i'm mentioning all you have to do is to click on the window panel on the window menu and then select whatever panel i'm mentioning so in this case will be the pages panel and then all you have to do is to uh, move around your file. If for whatever reason it doesn't move, like here, it doesn't really go anywhere, we need to allow pages to shuffle. How do you do that? Simply by clicking on this, let me zoom in so you can see, this little menu on the top, which brings out this fly menu, and then we need to untick, allow pages selected spread to shuffle. And look what happens, once we untick those, um, little menu there you'll be able to click and drag and separate your pages there so that's one way to operate in order to uh, make sure that the pages are not facing they're next to each other uh, michelle is saying yeah it happened let me know anna is tuning in from brazil that's fantastic also sharon from canada i get so mind blown to know where you guys are from is it's so amazing to see that we can be together despite the physical distance Another wonderful way to change your um, the setup of your document, if we don't want facing pages, is to use a shortcut, which is Option Command P for Mac, and that's Alt Control P on Windows, and then untick the facing pages. And one or more spread are set to keep their pages together. Do you want to maintain the current number of pages on the spread? I want to say no. And as you can see, we're gonna have here on the pages, all the pages now as standalone, which is exactly what I want for mine. Wilder is in the chat, what's up? Hi Wilder. Wilder is an amazing um, designer, streamer. He works with Adobe Latin America, I believe. Uh, let me know where are you right now? Cause I don't know where, where are you right now? If you're in Mexico, uh, you're in Bogota, let me know. I don't know, I, I don't wanna say anything silly. So let me know where are you watching from right now? Um, if you're in Colombia, I believe, I don't know. Don't remember. Let me know, Wilder. Wonderful to know. Majo, I'm fine. How are you? Nice to see you here. Virtual hugs. Yes. I always say a ton of Italian love for everyone here. Great. And another amazing feature since we're here is that in the document setup, you'll be able to change size of the documents, number of pages, facing pages, margin. If you change your mind, don't worry. The initial setup is always flexible for you to get edited throughout your uh, work. So don't worry, you don't have to do that um, right away. If you have any issue, you don't have to start a new document. You can always edit it back by going into the new document setup. Fantastic, now click on OK and you should be ready to go. Something that I advise is though, to keep your work a little bit neater, is to make sure that your frame is actually around your red uh, little line, which is your bleed area. So I'm gonna press the letter V on my keyboard and then click once into my frame and I can click and drag on the bounding box in order to make sure that I work nice and neatly and I keep the image within the bounding box. You can always use the key W from your keyboard in order to look at the preview. So that's always the final file when it's gonna be printed. And then again, here we have our uh, working preview. So those are the different view that you can have in InDesign. And there are many more, but those are just the one that we use to start with. Fantastic. So I'm going to start to place some text. We have the background. Maybe we can create another layer so we can lock the background and it doesn't move around. In order to do so, I'm going to click on the layer panel. Again, 
choose the window menu on the top if, if you cannot find the layers panel double click on the layer and i'm gonna call this one background and then click on ok then next to the little background we have an eye that is going to trigger the visibility of the layer so the file is always there but we want to make sure that is visible and then if you click next to the eye we can lock our layer that means that now whenever we're going to create something else the background is not going to move allowing us to have full control on our design and keeping everything nice and tidy fantastic all you have to do now is to click on the little plus icon in order to create a new layer and i'm going to call this layer text and then click on ok something very important that i always forget to say but sometimes also forget to do but it's so important is to embed your file so for example now we have brought this layer but what happens if i send this file around well all you have to do is to embed the link all you have to do embed the link and embed the file so all you have to do is to go on link that's why i say embed the link windows menu and click on links in order to show your links panel and as you can see we have a little cloud here because at the moment those files are part of the creative cloud they are embedded in our creative cloud and they're linked into our document but what you can do to actually link the document within your indesign file is to click on embed so select your file and click on embed link now as you can see the little cloud icon has changed here um, almost as a smart object in Photoshop but that allows you to keep the link so if you ever send the link the image is always gonna be there is now part of your file we're gonna see that with our share for review process this is not even gonna be a problem because Maria it doesn't even have to have InDesign open in order to uh, review a file um, she can be from her phone she can be from her tablet all she needs is internet connection in order to have a fast and secure review of our InDesign file let me know in the chat if you ever use the share for review so we're gonna be talking about it in about 10 minutes so let me know if you ever use the share for review before it was launched in june 2020 we're going to explore today the wonderful new features that are gonna that uh, have been launched at adobe max uh, so for indesign 2021 we're going to go a little bit more in depth with share for review but let me know if you ever used it before and in the meantime i can see that wilder is uh, right now in bogota sharon uh, is asking what part of canada uh to megan because also megan is canada so we got canada in the house we have maryland um we have atlanta and peru wonderful so amazing let me know keep it coming i'm always very excited to know where everyone is from and again i haven't seen any any halloween costume nobody's getting dressed up for halloween i really want to know i really want to know i'm gonna get dressed up i'm gonna make you guess what am i gonna get dressed up for i'm probably gonna tell you if we if we get to share where we're gonna get dressed up for halloween but definitely that's in the mood today so let's keep going with this halloween theme um, as i said i'm gonna go back into my layers and select the text layer and i'm gonna go ahead and click on my type tool in order to create a text box here so we can start to type some text i'm gonna write halloween oops and then i need to make sure that i give it a color that is actually readable because if we zoom in you cannot really see the black on this dark blue so all i have to do is to double click on the text and then head into my properties panel and then use the character options in order to select the text of your choice i'm going to uh, use a, a font called integral that i'm loving lately i'm using integral cf quite a lot and then i'm gonna head to my libraries in order to use one of the color from my color palette so for example i can use the light blue or maybe the pink let's see how it looks like with the pink yeah nice and readable then something else that i want to do here is to perhaps change the size to something nice and big we can use 30 and once you are happy um, with all the setting of your type you can go ahead and create a paragraph style paragraph style will allow you to save so much time when working in InDesign because they will create settings that you can easily replicate um, on for other text let me see Michael says that a few days ago he used a share for review that it's a great feature I absolutely love it like we are so addicted every document that we review now is just share for review so much faster 
we can keep focus, keep creating. And all we have to do is just literally, we used to do three meetings. And now we're going to probably tell you a little story once Maria tunes in, but I used to have three meetings, email, review, uh, then notes. And now we just do everything in one call. That's super amazing. Matt is saying all time quark working hard to make in design. My new fave in design is going to be your new fave. It's really super cool. I, um, my background is in printing. Actually, I don't know if you guys know that, but I used to work in a printer. So I got a big, big love for print design. Fantastic. But let's keep going. So once we create our text, if we head here to where it says paragraph style, again, always under my um, properties panel, you can create a new paragraph by clicking on the little icon here where it says create new. And we can call this one top heading. And then press on return. If you click on the little icon here where it says paragraph style and then click on paragraph style, the paragraph style panel will pop up. You can also find it under our window menu and styles and then paragraph styles. The paragraph style always come accompanied by his best friend, which is the character style. It's always there to keep us company in order to create some more enhancement in our text, but we're going to see how to use that in just a second. Fantastic. So once you created your uh, text, if you don't have anything else to add, all, what I usually use is um, a wonderful shortcut, which is uh, something that is a time saver for me and is option command C that's alt control C on window. And look what it does. It fits the entire frame, the, t the entire text box to my text. So, let me do that one more time. If your text is big and perhaps you do, you know you keep clicking on it because you got other items, um, a very very quick way of shrinking it out is to use Option Command C. Boom, and here it does. The text box it just wraps around our text. Fantastic. So as you can see here, I have a little bit more of the margin to go. So it looks like I could perhaps extend and make my text a little bit bigger. All I have to do is to click on the top adding paragraph style. And then we can always and anytime change the settings. I'm going to head into my basic character formats and increase the size a little bit. So make sure that preview is ticked so we can see the changes taking place live. It looks like 33 was a little bit too big. 31 is absolutely fine. So I just need to go one point up. And from here, you can also change color if you wish. So if you add under character color, you can use any other color just like so. But at the moment, I'm going to keep my purple, pink, and I'm going to click on OK. And once I'm done with my text, it's time to bring in some images. I'm going to head back into my libraries and they are just right here. And I'm going to click and drag in order to bring this lovely illustration that our amazing Polina. Polina, by the way, is another member of Studio Pre My Soul. She joined about two months ago, a month and a half, and uh, she created this wonderful graphic, which she also um, shared into the resources. So I remember iamplady.com slash resources. You'll be able to download the background that I'm using and the illustration as well. Also, let me know if you want the color palette. So I could probably add the color palette in there. Now look what happened here. I moved and I wanted to make the image smaller, but I only shrinked the uh, actual uh, frame. I didn't shrink the asset. How do we fit the content into the frame in just a few clicks? Well, make sure that you select the V, which is the direct selection tool and select the image and then use your shortcut shift option command E in order to fit your content to frame. So again, when something like that happens, you done a mistake or you just want to reset, resize, um, a frame just like so, but then you lose sight of your content again with your uh, frame selected. All you have to do is use shift option command E and here we go. We have the resized it over here. So our postcard is coming together nicely. And uh, Sharon is saying it. she switched side when InDesign came out. I completely agree. Uh, Nuri said, yes, welcome to the dark side. We are definitely in this spooky mood getting here. Fantastic. So there is no more question. We have Anthony from Austin, Texas. We're back. Yes. Wonderful. Amazing. Right. So uh, what do you think? Is there, should we just 
get Maria ready to review this or why don't we do another page? Let's do another page just real quick. So what I'm going to do here is just to change the background. So I'm going to click and draw to copy everything and um, double click on the page number three and use the shift option. Uh, whoops. Let's see, actually from edit paste in place. So it's shift option command V and everything is pasted in place. And as you can see, the background didn't come together with us because it was locked in the layer. So if you want to make sure that the um, background is also paste, you can use the layer here. All you have to do is unlock the layer. And as you can see, you'll be able to move and duplicate the layer around. But uh, I just realized that I already made another background so we can just stick with that and just paste in place the other assets. So that was my first go uh, for uh, my postcard. Let's go ahead and tune in with Maria and see what she thinks. And we're going to start the review on these Halloween postcards. Now, in order to start your review process, there are two different ways, at least two that I know of, that uh, you can share your file for review. One, super quick, all you have to do is to click on this icon at the top where it says share, and then you can click on create. But otherwise, I want to show you another cool way, which is to head under the window menu and select comments and review. This will bring up a panel, which is a review panel, which is, is dedicated for sure for review. Now it's uh, we got a little little banner over that it says to switch modes. So we need to switch between preview and normal mode in order to be able to see the changes. But again, once we're going to interact with Maria live, because remember, those review happens and get synced in real time. So let's go ahead and create a review. And I'm going to click on create. And then all I have to do is to have Maria email at hand, uh, because all I'm going to have to do is to uh, add people. So I'm going to zoom in so you can look at this beautiful panel so make sure that you can set to invite only if you want to preserve the security of your document share for review it's super safe unless someone is invited they cannot share the link but if instead you want to have more than one person um, you can put it public so if i share with maria maria will be able to share it perhaps with the client but at this stage we're not ready to share anything with anyone else it's an internal meeting so we keep it invite only so i just want maria to um to have a look at the file. So where it says invite people, I'm gonna use her email. And then I'm gonna write a comment here. Um, so I'm gonna say, hey Maria, I'm ready for first review. And then I'm gonna click on invite. And in just a few seconds, the invitation is sent. So let's jump and see with Maria um, if she get the notification and how does this wonderful share for review works. So here we are. Hi, Maria. Nice to see you again. Thank Hello you so much. Hello again, everyone. Hello, Claudie. You've done some wonderful work there. So can you see my screen? I'm ready to show you what exactly happened when Claudie shared for review with me. I have here my Creative Cloud app and you see I'm going to open it up and I already have the notification from Claudie that has sent me the file for review. You can see that I don't need the actual software because the file opened in my browser. And you see what Claudie created here? Wonderful, wonderful job. So you're already, it's already there? You already it's already it? there. That's I mean, so you can see everything. And as I scroll down, you can see not just the one design, but everything Claudie created in the Adobe InDesign. Uh, I think I think that the client is gonna like the purple one a little more. So shall we edit this one? I'm here waiting for your review. So Wonderful. go ahead and I'm gonna keep watching, see what happens here in my pages. Really, really excited to see how this wonderful feature works, even if I know that we use it already a lot. That's true. So let's see. Uh, actually, you know what? It, it is a great job, but Paulina sent me an illustration for the word Halloween last night. Okay. So I think it's going to look even better if we just uh, replace the text with the actual illustration. As you see here, these are my tools here on the right that I use to review the process uh, with Claddy. The one I chose for now is a strike, strike through text 
It's right in the middle. Maria, let me jump real quick into your screen so we can have a, a little bit a better view of these amazing tools. Wonderful. So you can see the tools I talked about are right here on the right. So I'm going to use them to make it as clear as, as I can for Claudie, what she needs to do. And sorry, before you start, sorry to interrupt yes, you. Yes, I just want to, for those of you who never use this tool, I just want to go over real quick. We have the pin tool, which is the very first one uh, that allows us to put a pin and Maria is going to use in a second. Then we have ally text. Just, you know, in the past, you probably, we used to be on a call and a message, that text, the one at the top, the top of the page. You don't have to do that anymore because Maria is going to be able to highlight it and that's going to show on my document right away. Strike through is going to allow you to cross the text that you don't need or maybe you need to replace and then you can draw the tool but most importantly Maria will be able just to mention me as a chat so I can get the notification and um, if you want to get started with the review I'm just gonna also jump on share screen so we can see that taking place live amazing so let's start with the strike through text as you see I have the tool just selected here I'm just gonna do the text and it just does it it just strikes through the text and I can tell to Claudia exactly what I need to happen right now. I make a comment. I make sure that I tag her so she receives a notification. Can you please replace this text with Paulina's illustration? And I'm going to submit that to Claudia. So now Claudi doesn't really have Paulina's illustration because Paulina sent it to me. So what can I do to make life easier for her? I can put it in our shared Love Maria gallery. making life easier for me all the time. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. So back to our shared libraries. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take Paulina's illustration. She made a few great ones, but I think that for the purpose of contrast on this piece, I'm going to use the green one. And I think that this will appear for Claudi immediately. Oh, sorry, Maria, I'm going to interrupt you again. I have um, something happening in my screen. So I have here a pop-up into my review page. So what Maria was doing there, and as you see, it just took a few seconds. We want, we're doing everything live. We want to really show you how this feature works. So uh, everything is happening as you go. Uh, while Maria was, was um, showcasing the different assets and how to edit, I already received a message. So let me zoom in over here. I have a, a message from Maria saying, can you please replace this text with Paulina illustration? So I heard already, cause we are here in the stream what she's doing, but in real life, I'll be like, hey, where I can find it. That's fine. That's totally fine. Where do I find the illustration? Cause I don't have it and I'm gonna have to replace the text. And I, as you guys can see, I cannot spell. <laughs> Fantastic. And then um, I'm going to make sure that I had, had Maria here so she can receive their notification as well and click on submit. So as you can see, this actually is happening. She's working on a website. It's just a link. She's not working on InDesign, but I'm getting all the different strike through. Can you see the strike through is over there on my text with the red that's what Maria has done on the link is actually working and implementing um, the editing and the review process right away into my InDesign. So in the past, Maria, I think we used to do like a like a video call and then yes. call and then notes and then an email with the notes. That's very true. And, and then the yeah. editing. The fact is, if you realize how much time you get to focus back on creating instead of just going back and through with emails is just it's just fantastic and i see here that your comment is right underneath the thread actually it doesn't even create a different one it's really nice and compact i see that i have one reply to my comment i should have told her <laughs> sorry cloudy so yes again tagging her so she can receive my notification you can find that in our library and again i press submit and that's all I need to do. I have to remind you, I'm still on my browser. I'm not on InDesign. Cloud is on InDesign to do the changes, but I can be anywhere because this is just a normal browser. And that's amazing. You can you can literally do it from your iPad as well. Like mm -hmm. you can be you can be at the supermarket. I've actually we've done a review where I was in the car in Italy 
it, it was like some I was it was an evening I was in the car with my having dinner with my aunt and my uncle in the south of Italy and we needed to do something super fast for a client and we actually done a, a review where Maria was in the office and I was in the car and we just knock it off in 30 minutes that's true yeah the joys of remote working here with Adobe InDesign <laughs> that's very true and um, Sharon is saying I've used it in before and I like it by my Adobe Share is the tool that my colleagues prefer. Uh, however, the additional tool is great, but for some reason, I don't see it in my updated version of InDesign 2021. Very odd. I will strongly suggest to get into your Adobe Creative Cloud app, log out and log back in and then see if there is any other update. Sometimes up and there are so many apps that are getting launched during uh, Adobe Max. So Sharon say, Clady, I also double click on the right bottom corner to wrap around the text quickly. Yes, tap, tap the, the, um, the bottom corner. Yes, before we were talking about how to make the text book fit the text. Fantastic advice, Sharon. And I love this community where everyone is stepping in with advices. We, that's great. We always get inspired. So let us know in the chat, what is your favorite tool? I think that's, that's something. What is your favorite tool? I always love type, so I'm going to say the type tool with what you can do with paragraph style and character styles has to be my choice, I think. Fantastic. Right, but let's keep going with this editing. So I'm still here waiting, so where do I find the illustration? So I think you should see my reply by now. Okay. Let's give it a little time. And by the way, oh, yeah, your reply is yeah, here. Yeah, Fantastic. Be. So you can find that in our library. Great. By the way, if you're wondering how do I get to see all these comments? Well, again, it's under the review panel. If you wanna access the review panel, so if you perhaps shared your link, and again, in order to share, you have to use the um, link above here where it says share, and then head under window, comments, review. In that case, you will see all the different comments coming up. Okay, so um, another thing that I wanted to say is that if you were looking at the file like that into the preview mode, you won't be able to see the strike through. And I think that that's a very, very awesome um, feature because if a client's working, you don't really want to see a messy document with all the notes. You only do that when you work. And let me zoom in so you can really see. So here we have the text with the strike through, which is the edit that Maria has done. And then if I press on W and I go in preview mode, it's hidden. So it only reveal up when, um, when I'm working with that preview. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this text because Maria said that we're not going to use this and I'm going to head into my libraries and um, found the text. Wonderful is there. And I'm going to click and drag in order to bring into my InDesign file. Oh, that's really cool. Paulina has done such an amazing job. Shout out to Paulina. And um, if you want to see more about our amazing team, you can add on Print My Soul dot com slash team or i believe we had uh, we just introduced polina to the team on instagram so if you head on uh, um, instagram.com slash print my soul which is my studio um main handle is it print my soul yes is it print yes. my soul <laughs> it's, it's not studio print my soul it's just at print my soul you'll be able to see the introduction uh, of polina she created this amazing illustration i really love that type i think it works much better. What do you guys think? Should I go with the normal type or with Polina illustration? I think that's going to be an easy, easy question. That looks so neat. It looks amazing. Wonderful. So I'm going to go back into the review and just because I created different colors, I'm going to first of all, go ahead and solve uh, this thread. So if you click on these three two dots next to Maria, because I already done what she said. So I'm just going to click on resolve and there are no more comments. Uh, but then one thing that I have to do for Maria to see uh, the, the changes happening is to head again under share. And all you have to do is to update the link right here. So you don't have to share it again by simply clicking update link. That gives you time to make as many changes as you want in your document. And then when you're done, you click on update link. And in just a few seconds, Maria should be able to uh, view the updated version of my postcard happening into her screen. Again, we're working live, so bear with us with our internet connections, but that should, uh, should happen right there and then. So I need to update the link and uh, 
I'm not sure if you have to refresh, but uh, or just we need just need to be patient in order to um, see the change happening live to to our screen as well. And perhaps something else that I wanted to ask Maria is also if we have maybe any color. What do you guys think? Do you like this green on the on the um, on the purple? Does it does it work nice? I really like it myself, but. Would you like to see some more options? I have so many other illustrations that Paulina created and I can put them all yes, in our please. library. Going Let's into our colors. Creative Cloud app, I can just simply drag and drop, taking the green out, because I already added that, and it's here. Fantastic. It's so easy, again, just a drag and drop. And meanwhile, I just leave Cloudy to see the new stuff in a library while I refresh to see what she changed on the work. You remember this doesn't change because it's the first page, but as I scroll... Oh yeah, I only modified it for the second page. <laughs> that, that's the one we're working on, no worries. <laughs> so that's it, it's done. And as you see, the comments on the right are gone because Claddy resolved it for me. I don't have to get confused on what is done and what is not. So just so fast, everything's done and all the comments are gone. That's really, really nice. Uh, one more thing though, it's because I spoke to the client and the client wants to use this postcard as an invite as well. So yes, but the good news, you don't have to change the design, just the layout. Okay. So in this case, just to pass the comment to Claudia again, I tag her on the document and I go, can you please create an alternative layout? wants to use this as an invite and that will be actually a submit for Claddy and that will be quite exciting because I want everybody to see the alternate alternate layout tool and uh, Claddy that's going to show you and so what course, did you use in order to create a comment in this case in this case exactly I just used it doesn't really matter, does it? Because I need the whole layout to change. But I use the pin tool to to pin on the right page because this is the page we're working oh, on. Oh, fantastic. That's super smart. Let's go back into our shared screen and I'm going to um, keep my review open here and I'm going to also be receiving Maria uh, work soon. In the meantime, I'm going to head into my uh, little CC libraries here and I can see that you dropped so many different versions of colors. That's so fantastic. Um, so usually we don't always do that on a call. Um, we sometimes work on share for review even without talking. Mm -hmm. So we just can keep working. And that's the main, to me, that's the main highlight for this feature is the fact that you can keep creating. You can keep working while you are reviewing. So I'll be probably creating something, another document, just staying in design. I don't have to go anywhere. I'm literally, I don't have to call Maria. I don't have to go on Zoom. I don't have to do anything. All I just have to do is to make sure that my little review comment um it's open in order to have the the, uh, the comment coming through and by the way the notifications also come through uh, the creative cloud oh, a little bell here and um and then they happen via email i also have it on my mobile um so anywhere you can get your notification depends of whatever you wanted and then you can uh keep working again i just keep in design open i don't even i don't even open the creative cloud app to be honest with you i just do everything uh within the review and again if for whatever reason this review panel doesn't show up for you all you have to do is to head under window comments and a review. That was pretty much one of the uh, questions that I had most regarding the review was where do you find the review? And as soon as I open it, here it is. Maria Deli Giorgi wrote, uh, can you please create an alternative layout? Clients wants to use this invite as well as clients do. So how do we create a different layout within the same, uh, uh, within the same document? Joe is asking, what is the alternative layout? We're gonna show you right away. This is a fantastic feature mm -hmm. of InDesign. And just let me show you real quick here. All you have to do is, for example, an alternate layout is a different size document, or maybe you wanted um, landscape rather than postcard. So just a different layout, something different that is not a portrait four by six postcard. So in order to change the layout, you don't have to leave your document. You can keep all the different layouts within your document, which I think that is such a huge time saver. And then I'm gonna head under my layout window and 
click on create alternate layout and it's basically bringing me another um, document setting panel i can call this one invitation and um i'm gonna actually maria i'm gonna work on this real quick and then we're gonna come back for the review and yeah, i'm wonderful. gonna just use some um, lorem ipsum for the text and then uh, we're gonna do the review on that as See well soon. thank you so much so here we are working on this create alternate layout so joe and for those of those of you uh, who don't know i know that christy know what an alternate layout is an alternate layout as i said is just a different layout within the same document which i think is mind-blowing in this case i'm going to use a, a alpha letter size so which is at 8.5 by 5 by 5 and in this case it will be a, a landscape invitation and all you have to do is to uh, click on ok and boom here it is it literally created a copy of all our Im of all our images in a different layout you can see th this in uh under the page panel uh it's called invitation here it is instead of sitting underneath instead of sitting underneath the normal pages as you will do if you create a new page it will always go under the same page it creates a new column under the page panel where you have the new layout and you even have the name of the layout over here which i think is amazing we can call this one poster so i know that here i have all my poster layout and here an invitation so i can literally work on two formats two formats many different pages performance within the same indesign file which i think is mind-blowing now let's zoom out and let's go back in here and let's try to select and fit our images so they work well for this layout again i'm gonna click and drag my frame and make sure that it works well with these new bleeds just like so and then again remember the shortcut shift option command e in order to center our image it looks like we're gonna have to stretch it a little bit click on this little eye and then what I do, I use my trackpad just to um, pretty much like you're zooming in on a phone or you can use shift in order to constrain proportion and alt in order to keep it to the center and then click and drag on the corner in order to stretch the image proportionally and to the center, just like so. And I'm gonna reposition this text as well. So we have this lovely illustration that Polina has made maybe we can make it a little bigger again when i make it a little bigger i use shift and option shift and command in order to constrain the proportion when you're working uh, with the frame tool and then we can have these little pumpkins here just like so so chrissy say thanks um thanks Claudia. i knew about it but i never use it it's super super um useful christy i use it all the time uh, currently say can we see that larger currently and what are you were referring to more than happy to show it larger to show it better for you so let me know and if you're talking about the share for review we're gonna head there just with maria um in just about five minutes once i finish off this this layout tomorrow stay tuned in because we're going to be talking about two new fantastic feature which is the uh, locate color and the content um aware wrap which are amazing some intelligent features of indesign indesign is getting cooler and cooler i love it i already loved it before but now that is allowing me to work faster with my team with my clients i basically just stay all the time in in um indesign right so what i'm gonna do now is to um use a, a little solid shape in order to create a background for my text because our background is a little bit dark and then i'm gonna double click on the fill color in order to give it a color and I'm gonna choose white or maybe to use our palette and keep everything consistent i can add to my libraries and select this light blue color from my libraries then if you click on this little yellow icon and i'm gonna perhaps zoom in on the file just like so if we click on this little uh corner uh um tool there on, on our on our frame on our shape all we have to do is to drag it to the side and look what happens we transform our rectangle into a shape with round corners so if you ever need like a banner or if you ever need a shape to be used as a background this is a fantastic tool just so you don't have you know we can keep something nice and smooth 
because the pumpkin is all rounded up our tie our typeface looks like it's all round as well so i'm just going to um, keep it like that and maybe we can uh, make our type even a little bit bigger so it just kind of gets on top of our of our little type box just like so and again if you ever happens to you um that you don't know why something is showing at the back all you have to do is to bring whatever graphic you want to bring at the top to the front and you can use that by you can do that by using the command and right bracket to bring it to the top and left bracket to bring it to the bottom well if you want to bring it to the very very top or the very bottom you can use also command shift and the left and the right bracket left bracket brings it to the back right bracket brings it to the front of course instead of a um, command if you're working on a windows you're going to be using control and by the way let me know in the chat who is using mac and who is using windows i always do these little uh tests i'm always very curious to see what people are using are you using mac are you using windows let me know fantastic so let me go ahead and keep going here um so once i'm done with the background again all i have to do is to uh, lock my layers and I think I'm working on the text layer I haven't been very well organized because as you can see all the little outlines are red and the color of my text layer is red so that tells me right away that I'm working on um, the background on the text layer well super easy how do I bring those into uh, my background I can just click on the down pointing arrow next to my layer and then I can see I have pumpkin here click and drag into the background and I'm gonna do the same pretty much with Halloween type and with my rectangle tool and then I can lock them so if I click on the down pointing arrow here I can see that the text layer is empty because I brought everything into the background and everything is showing here under my background fantastic I can now lock it and it's pretty much ready to go so if I click and drag nothing moves It's locked I can just bring in my text what I'm gonna do now is to click on the type tool and uh, making sure that I select my text if it ever happens to you that you select a tool and it doesn't work on your uh, workspace is because if you have a layer lock you need to make sure that you create a new layer or you had a layer that is unlocked so you'll be able to work with it because the entire purpose of locking a layer is to uh, don't make any edits on that layer something else you can do is also not necessarily lock the layer but just lock an item inside the layer and you can always check which which object are you working on by toggling the visibility with the little eye icon in this case i can lock everything and i can just lock the entire background layer and then head back into my text select the type tool which is also that letter t shortcut and click and drag in order to create a text box here now i don't have any text hopefully when we do the review maria will be able to uh give me some text to replace it with but i want to create a style i want to i want to understand like you know how so um, I'm just gonna say I believe Maria said it was a zoom party so zoom party zoom zoom Halloween party and we can replace that afterward and then we can have some time some other text so I'm gonna write time here and maybe link okay um, you can also, if you have no idea at all what the text is going to be, you can also use a wonderful feature, which is the lorem ipsum, is a fill-in text. All you have to do here is to go under type and um, fill with placeholder text. Now, bear in mind that it's going to fill the entire space that you have left into the frame. So make sure to first select how you want, how big you want your frame to be, just to make sure that you have the entire space filled. And you can always go back and delete any of these text if it's for example too much so you know we can just leave it like that fantastic so we have some text to style but let's go ahead and uh, style some paragraph and character style now um let's go ahead and find the paragraph styles little um panel first and i see that it's not here well as i said whenever you don't find a panel head to the windows menu and select styles and in this case paragraph style to bring it the panel and here it is um i already uh, done this for maria but she doesn't know yet so maybe what i can do is to share this with her let's see if that works so because we usually use it without even talking so what i'm gonna do here is to reply to her and let her know hi it's done and then click on submit 
and then hopefully Maria will be able to resolve this one. So sometimes what I see is that um, when I'm working, she just resolves so the comments will go away. Uh, that means that she has seen it or sometimes she just replies to me saying, fantastic, well done. And, um, and then I can just keep working. And all I have to do to make sure that she sees what I'm doing, remember, once you created the changes and you're ready to share with your team or with your client, remember to head, to head under the share icon at the top and click on update link. So now that's the version that she's gonna say, see, she's gonna be able to see it and hopefully she's gonna reply and resolve the comment and basically seeing that we've done a good job. Right, so I'm gonna head back into my uh, new layout and here I'm gonna create a new paragraph style for my title. I'm gonna create a new style by clicking on the little plus icon and I'm gonna select the text because I want to um, use this paragraph style for this text. Um, Carolyn says, can you share paragraph style? Yes, you can. You can drag it into your libraries and I'm gonna show you how to do so in just a second. So all you have to do here is to take a name for your paragraph style. I'm gonna call this one title. And then again, I'm going to get to my um, integral CF and maybe use it uh, bold. And again, from the color character colors tab, we can select um, maybe the pink that we were using before. So everything is in theme. And uh, um, let's see if we want to make it a little bit bigger, perhaps. So let's go back to the basic character formats and give it like a 18. Remember, it's always important for accessibility to use a minimum of a 12 point size. And that's super important when creating um, assets. Fantastic. So um, if you want to worry about the intensive spacing, this is a space in between a paragraph style and a different paragraph style, or you can also set the space in between two paragraph style of the same type. So in this case, maybe the time is also can be uh, similar and we can share the paragraph style. So I wanna make sure that the space between paragraph is something like not 0.1, just like so. Oops. Not 0.125. I usually work in millimeters, so sorry for these little inches. Boops. Uh, fantastic. Then I'm gonna go ahead and again in the basic character formats, I can set the letting uh, perhaps to 22. Fantastic. It looks like we have done with our paragraph style and I'm gonna click on OK. Now, as you can see, our time and link here has got the same paragraph. What I will suggest you to do when you work is to always make sure that your hidden characters are showing in order to bring them in. Look, they're coming right here. Um, they are indicator of a break, a paragraph of points. It's always important to have them there. Uh, all I did is use the shortcut command option and I that's alt control um, I on Windows. Does the review show both layouts? We're going to check with Maria. Let's let's go ahead and check Maria if it shows both layouts. Um, let's see if that let's just connect. It should have been updated on our um, on our site as well. Let's go ahead and find a shared screen here. Hello, Maria. We're back here. Hello, guys. So I just refreshed so I can see Clarice's changes. As we said, uh, Claudia showed you how you can see our comments on InDesign, but I have to remind you, I'm not using the software. I'm just on a normal browser. And for me, the comments just come right on the side. Uh, I have notifications, of course, with a Creative uh, Cloud app. But even if you don't have the app on the device you're using at the moment, which has happened sometimes with our clients, you will still receive an email as a notification for everything. And now, as I scroll down, because I asked Claudie to make some, some alternate, alternative layouts for me, as you see, as I scroll down, they just come up. They just added to me on a, on a further down page. So I see here that she replied for me. Of course, that has to do with the previous layout. This is why it jumped back up. I see that she's done it, so I can hit resolve and we don't like to leave comments in between. <laughs> Try to keep it as clean as possible. And I see everything she has done here. I'm gonna make one more refresh to make sure I have everything she has done. And I'm gonna go again back here and we see everything that she added the box, she added the text, that's wonderful. However, 
I am here to tell her exactly the text that we're gonna need. Uh, we use strike through text, not now. Right now we want to edit the existing text. So I'm just gonna hit the fourth tool on the right, which is the replace text tool. And I'm just gonna go up here. And by the way, I just wanna um, get Janet reply. So yes, does the review show both layouts? Yes, it does. Instead of showing just one page next to the other, like I see them, they show just in one full document. Because remember, she's working on a link. She doesn't need to have InDesign open. It just updates right away. As soon as I make it, here it is. It's gonna um, happen right there. And then for, for Maria, it's just gonna be everything under one single uh, page. So in this case, like I'm using very heavy mess, heavy uh, images, but it's not a problem. She doesn't need to download a PDF. We don't need to d to download an email. We're working so much faster with this feature, and it's super secure because even if Maria now shares the link or someone see the link, they cannot access it unless I invite them. And as you can see, guys, we've been doing a review. We've been doing edit, and I never left in design, so I can keep focus on creating the document. Um, and Janet is saying that's cool in review. Are the layouts labeled? Maria, are the layouts labeled? I believe they're just coming to a stack. Yes, this is true because I downloaded nothing. You have to remember, as Claudia very correctly said, I'm just viewing things online. I've taken nothing that doesn't have to do with size or with my internet speed even. I'm just connected and I just see a file changing online. And you can see I use my replace tool here. Of course, it strikes through some text, which I didn't really want to do because I wanted to add some text. But you know, with the whole replace thing, I just had to. Uh, and by the way, I can see that you resolved the comment there. So at the moment, I don't true. have anything. It looks like the layout was approved and we're just waiting on the text. Now for this one, it's really amazing because I didn't even need to write anything. I just used replace text. And Claddy now sees the strike through text. And the amazing InDesign tool is replace with. I didn't even need to actually make a comment. It's really nice. And having done that, I think we want to add some time here. So I'm gonna, I wanted to do all of that. Okay, it's fine. Probably need to do it twice. So in order for me to receive the notification, Maria does have to um, write a little at and I be able to receive a notification both on my email and my um, credit cloud app and I also get it on my phone. Can you add description to it? Yes, you can add description, you can cross check and you can draw. We haven't shown the drawing yet. That'd be fantastic to show that. That's true. Maybe I should just skip that, you know. Maybe we should do the draw. So draw a shape, which is how we used to do it anyway. You can put a little arrow here, really cute. I used to do that on my phone. So sometimes I used to like take screenshot of things and then send it to Maria on WhatsApp. That was our very professional workflow on our Slack. But I used to just like draw on top of things, maybe on Slack. And right now, again, I don't have to go anywhere else. I just have to be in InDesign. When Maria is gonna finish off to create all the edits and when I'm gonna get the comments, I don't have to do anything besides just keep working. And of course here, I wanna follow what she does because we are here working together. Um, but it's amazing to see that taking place live in InDesign. So yeah, since we draw the, since we use the draw tool, again, what we need to do, I need to tag her so she will be able to see my comment. And then I say, please replace time with. And again, I submit the comment and the comment will appear to her screen shortly and she will receive notifications here and on her email as well. So I make sure she won't miss anything. And I was just sharing your screen, Maria, so people can really show the, the see the different tools and see everything taking place that you're doing. Because I think that when mm -hmm. we do the share screen together, it looks a little small. So um, you maybe just show the icons and because I, I just put it like on a full screen right now. Of course, here. so here is my panel for reviewing everything on Adobe InDesign. Great tools, all of them to save some time. So I can place a pin and I can show exactly what I need her to do. So I put a pin and she sees when I put a comment, she sees exactly what I want to be changed. Same way, I'm gonna cancel this one to be able to show you the rest, highlight text. So I can say, make this capital, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. I just highlight any text I want. Number three, strike to strike through text. The one we already did before. 
just want a word deleted that's all i can do double click on the document and it really finds the text and just puts a strike through there i can do the same with replace text so if i do that i can both strike through the text and write any replacement suggestions i have on the text field over here and last one draw a shape the great artistic <laughs> tool i use to make this arrow for her so she knows where to change and what. And let's go back into my screen because as you can see, everything that Maria was doing there is actually happening to my InDesign document. So it's actually happening live. And uh, I haven't done anything. I'm just here waiting so you guys can see that is there. And again, as I said, for whatever reason, if you don't see those changes happening live, it's because probably you're in normal mode. You need to make sure that you press the little W, uh, letter W on your, um, on your keyboard in order to go into preview and here they are so first of all under the reviews panel i can see um maria's comments and i can see of course the arrow showing me exactly where i need to implement the heading and replace the text now i saw a question from lila asking i wonder why the colors are different on the web so as you remember lila i don't know if you were seeing from the beginning if not i'm more than happy to share with you that when we started to work on this document we were working on a, um on a print design so when we went and selected our intent we selected an intent for print what that does is that automatically just by selecting uh, the print intent in design it changes the color mode into cmyk of course when we see something on web we're using the rgb mode um, so maria already knows that we're working on a printed document and that's not going to be the final uh, print for review that's something that i need to watch out but great eye lila is absolutely super super important to remember um, this if you work in cmyk of course the color are going to be a little bit different also depends on the monitor that you're using um and all of these lovely details it's important that you uh and we got like about 10 minutes not even 10 minutes left so i'm going to just make those edits that maria has created and then I'm going to export for print. So as I said, you need to be able to um, really see when you export that you're exporting for print if you're working with a print file and that you've been working with CMYK and vice versa if you're working with digital. Tomorrow we're going to create uh, a digital layout with uh, InDesign. We're probably going to bring some video from Adobe Stock, some really cool stuff. So uh, Team Mobs is saying you can apply different color profiles on different machines, but also, again, this is a document set for print. So when it's shared digitally, the color is going to look a little bit duller and vice versa if it's, uh, if it's for web you share it is gonna um, if you save it for print it's gonna look a little bit brighter sometimes so make sure that you know what is your output in order to select the right color mode and be aware that things are not gonna be the same if you use a different output instead of one that you intended to Lilia said it was yes correct that's exactly it fantastic so let's go ahead and see again what Maria changes were and um, all I have to do here is to click on the little changes. You can see even highlights the arrows. So Malia is saying, please replace the time with the following one. So all I have to do is to um, copy and paste right here. And it just already uses the paragraph style that I've created, which I think is so amazing. And uh, also Maria is telling me to um, replace with join our Zoom. And all I have to do is resolve and resolve and that means that i am done with it so join our zoom great Halloween how party. i can see everything happening live on my screen i, I already saw Claudia's results comment going and i have no comments by now amazing so so fast fantastic so um everything looks fine and Maria, you perhaps, there is one that it says a mapped comment. Maybe um, you will need to resolve it from your from your side. Can you show us how you resolve it from there or is it already gone? So we just I think need that's to, gone from me actually. Maybe we just need to wait for it to upload. Fantastic. In the meantime, so thank you so much, Maria. We're going to see you tomorrow for more share, um, share for review here in InDesign. Thank you for having me. I hope you use this tool because it is really a game changer. See you and soon. In the meantime, I'm gonna stay here and keep going with these paragraph styles. And uh, I had a question before, I believe from Michelle, asking if you can share a paragraph style. Yes, you can. All you have to do is to head into your paragraph style panel and with your paragraph style selected, you wanna head under um, this little paragraph style panel 
and there is this icon. This icon adds the selected style to the current library. So make sure that first of all, you head into your libraries here and you select the, the library. In this case, I'm working with the Halloween themed library. So that's perfect. That's the one that we want. And uh, with, I'm gonna leave the library here. So I wanna see the changes happening live. I'm gonna go back and select my styles, paragraph styles select my title and click on the icon that I mentioned before and boom here it is we have the title paragraph style right there ready to be used now um, let's say that I want this to be first of all a little bit smaller here so all I have to do is to go back to my basic character and make it 18 or maybe 16 point and then for this the time I wanted to create a little bit of difference maybe we can make it white without making big changes if you just want to change certain feature of a style all you have to do is to head under character style and click on the plus icon and this will override the changes to the paragraph style settings so in this case as you can see the options are much less uh, than the general paragraph style so in this case you can change the size so maybe I can make this one a 14 and also a color we can make it white and click on preview to see the changes happening live and you can also uh, maybe you can make it regular instead of bold fantastic if you want to change completely font you can also do that but all the other beautiful stuff like the space in between you cannot use the character style in that case you will have to create a new paragraph style and maybe we have time to do so by the way, let me know in the chat if you ever use next styles, because if you haven't, that's, I'm gonna take my notes already um, to do a digital document. And that's something else. Let me know in the chat, because I'm here to share information for you. So let me know in the chat if you want to work with uh, InDesign and create an interactive PDF to share online. Maybe we can use some video, we can use some music, we can, we can create some buttons. Let me know if that's what you wanna see. I'll get ready for tomorrow um, to, to do so. And I think it's time already to say goodbye. So I'm gonna keep my eyes in the chat. In the meantime, what I wanna do here is to uh, run the schedule for today because you gotta stay tuned. There is a fantastic busy day here at Adobe Live. So let me jump into my schedule. Caroline says, boom, Adobe Magic. Yes, Adobe Kadabra taking place here. So today we started with getting started in InDesign with me and the lovely Maria from Studio Print My Soul. And after us, the lovely Voodoo Val. Hi Val, can't wait to see your stream with Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, followed by Brigitte Palma with some vector art and the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with the one and only Andreo Andrew Okrado, followed by Mobile App Design with Jessica Moon and Tallinn uh, Wattsworth and then third challenge of the day in X3 with uh, the lovely Andrea Happy and at the end of the day Alice Lee and Anusha Sayer with the wonderful Doodle Therapy. So uh, in the meantime I'm looking at the chat do you want to see the digital InDesign taking place tomorrow? Uh, yes Monica is saying yes I'll, I would love to work in InDesign. Um, Chris is saying I had used nested style. I mean, next style. Let me know if you want to work with a digital document. We got like about one minute before we say goodbye. Let me go back into my document here. And here it is. Let me see if I can get the right screen. Here we are. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're pretty much ready to go here. We can close at any time the review. So in this case, all you have to do is to close the panel and all the comments go away. So. Um, as you see, we've done the review, we create an assets. Probably that's what I can do in this last moment is to show you how you can export for print. I think that that's what we didn't do uh, today. Let me go back and unlock the background because I want this file to be on top. We haven't finished, but I want to show you how to export. In order to export, all we have to do is to click on a, um, a press command E, which is our export shortcut and then make sure that you select export for print select the destination folder and click on save and then you can select all the different ranges on pages in this case you can select invitation which is the one over here and we know that we want uh, the page number two and fantastic all you have to do is to make sure that your marks are selected so we got your bleed setting and click on export and 
here it is it says there is some over text i know i haven't finished it but i just want to show you how to export it so as you can see here we have our file with our illustration with our text with our paragraph styles and most importantly with our trim marks and with our bleed settings also and this will be ready to be sent to a printer 30 seconds to go i wanted to say thank you so much for joining me here for this halloween indesign stream it's amazing to be with you and i'll catch you tomorrow but don't forget stay tuned Budoval is coming with the photoshop daily creative challenge thank you so much everyone i'll see you tomorrow bye